This is a video on one sample hypothesis testing. Testing a proportion. Test the claim that the proportion of people who own cats is significantly different than 70% at the 0 0.01 significance level. In a sample of 500 people, it was discovered that 79% owned cats. So when I do a hypothesis test, we first want to state our hypotheses. Our null hypothesis, our alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis, we are dealing with a proportion here, P. Our null hypothesis is going to be P is equal to the data value or proportion value that I want, I'm dealing with here would be 70%. So null hypothesis is P equals 0.70. <clears throat> the null hypothesis is always going to be equal to. The alternative hypothesis, since we're dealing with significantly different, the null hypothesis will be not equal to. The null hypothesis can either be less than, greater than, or not equal to. In this case, it's not equal to. So important to note here is that I do have a two-tailed test. So, and my claim is the null hypothesis. That is my claim in this case, that the proportion of people who own cats is significantly different. <clears throat> Next step. Well, now all I need to do is actually go to Google Sheets and put all this information in. Google Sheets has the capability to tell you your test statistic and your p-value. So in this situation, the first thing you need for Google Sheets is X. X is the number of observations. Well, out of 500 people, 79% own cats. Well, how many would that be? What's 500 times 0.79? That's going to be 395. My sample size N is 500. My Proportion, population proportion that I'm dealing with here is 0.70. We refer to it as P0 in the Google Sheets. And then my null hypothesis used a sign of not equal to. So null hypothesis was not equal to. <clears throat> One other important thing to note would be the fact of alpha equaling 0 0.01. Alpha is always the level of significance. All right, so now we're going to go to Google Sheets. So in Google Sheets, we're actually gonna go to the data list tab and I'm dealing with one proportion here. Since I'm dealing with the proportion, I'm gonna go over here to columns D and E. X is the number of successes. In this case, it's 395. Sample size is 500. P naught is 0.70 and not equal to is my sign. Once you put this information in, you'll notice that your test statistic is about 4.39 and your p-value is the four decimal places, practically zero, honestly. So these are the two items that I need. So my test statistic, test statistic in this case is going to be 4.39 and my p-value, I always write out the word p-value so you don't confuse p with proportion. p-value is pretty much going to be zero. So how do I come to a conclusion about my hypothesis test? Well, anytime you have the p-value and you know alpha, which you always will, you can compare the two. So in this case, my p-value is zero, my alpha is equal to 0 0.01. The p-value is less than alpha. Anytime the p-value is below alpha, you are able to conclude and reject the null hypothesis. So reject H0. Which remember our claim was the alternative. 
So since I was able to reject H0, it doesn't mean that my claim is necessarily the go-to, that it's correct. All this suggests is that because of the ability to reject H0, it means that there is actually evidence to support my claim. So using my table of conclusion statements, we rejected H0, and our original claim does not include equality. My claim did not include equality. So this is my conclusion statement here. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that and whatever the claim happens to be in this case in the question. So that gives me a final conclusion statement of there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the proportion of people who own cats is significantly different than 70%. So that's how you run a hypothesis test. One of the many ways that you can come to a conclusion on how to write the conclusion statement. Thank you for watching.